हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी द मेमोरी रीड एंड मेमोरी राइट साइकिल फॉर एट जेड सिक्स माइक्रो प्रोसेसर इन मैक्सिमम मोड नाउ इन द पिन डायग्राम ऑफ एट जेड सिक्स माइक्रो प्रोसेसर वी हैव डिस्कस समथिंग अबाउट द मिनिमम एंड मैक्सिमम मोड इन मिनिमम मोड इट इज अ सिंगल प्रोसेसर मोड एंड इन मैक्सिमम मोड द सिस्टम कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ मल्टी प्रोसेसर सिस्टम विच इज कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ नंबर ऑफ माइक्रो प्रोसेसर्स सो first of all we are going to see the how the configuration of maximum mode looks so first of all starting from the one of first line is m m n oblique mx bar so for selecting the maximum mode of 806 microprocessor this pin should be grounded so zero is connected to the m n oblique mx bar so it will select the 806 microprocessor in maximum mode apart from that the same clock generator is used for providing the reset signal clock signal and ready signal and clock sig generator is being provided with the external crystal oscillator now the next thing is nothing but the latch 8282 latch which is used for latching the address which is being given by the 806 microprocessor to it and so that it can be forwarded to the respective memories through the external address bus after that the transceiver that is 8286 transceiver which will be used for selecting the data transfer between the 806 microprocessor and memory whether it is a rom and ram in the case of rom when the data is being read from the rom the direction of this transceiver is in input so the data is forwarded from from this data bus by directional data bus from memory to the microprocessor and in the case of write operation the direction of transceiver is from microprocessor to the ram so this is being selected by the dir bar which will select the direction and after that the g bar is used for enabling this transceiver so until and unless this transceiver is enabled which is nothing but one of the buffer the data will not be transferred between the memories and the microprocessor now next is the differentiate differentiating factor of 806 microprocessor in minimum and maximum mode now unlike the minimum mode which is which has the ale signal directly connected from the microprocessor in the 806 microprocessor maximum mode s0 s1 and s2 bar are given to the bus controller and bus controller is used for providing the different signal which are being required to the microprocessor for example mrdc that is memory read after that mwtc that is memory write iorc that is io read and iowc that is io write apart from that the further control signals are also being sent that is den that is data enable ale that is the address latch enable dt oblique r bar that is data transmit or receive so in minimum mode these signals are directly fetched from the 806 microprocessor to the latch transceiver and the um, respective memories but in the case of maximum mode these signals are being provided from the bus controller 8282 so this is how the maximum mode configuration of 806 microprocessor look one more thing is the same signal that is a0 and bhe bar are used for selecting the address of cso that is chip select for odd address bank that is cse that is chip select for even address bank for ram as well as same the two signals for the rom also now the next we are going to see is nothing but read cycle for 806 microprocessor in maximum mode now we are going to see the memory read burst cycle for 806 microprocessor in maximum mode as we have seen in the diagram how the configuration of maximum mode is there 8288 bus controller is used for providing the respective control signals to the memory that are nothing but the den ale after that dt oblique r bar and memory read memory write now we are going to see what happens on that signal in t1 t2 t3 and t4 states now firstly in t1 state the address is latch onto the external bus so first of all address or data bus which is multiplex carries a0 to a50 in the first t state similarly 
the address and status multiplex bus carries A16 to A19 pins in the T1 state. Now these are being latched by using address latch enable which is nothing but the output of S0 to S1. So this address latch enable becomes 1. So in this case only the whatever the address sent by the 8086 microprocessor that gets latched onto the external latch. After that when it goes from 1 to 0 the address gets latched onto the external latch. Now after that BHE oblique S7 is used for signifying whether we are selecting the even address bank or odd address bank. So depending upon that it goes from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. Again S0 and S2 combination of these three signals are used for providing the different memory signals that are memory read, memory write and different other signals. So S0 and S2 becomes active in the T1 state itself and from this the MRDC bar which is nothing but output of this will be forwarded after that DT oblique R bar and DN bar. So we will just refer the diagram. So S0 to S2 are active and from that MRDC bar is being activated and apart from that DEN and the DT oblique R bar is used. So the combination of S0 and S2 disables this MRDC bar which selects which is nothing but the active low signal which will enable the memory. So it is nothing but a memory read signal after that DT oblique R bar selects the direction of transceiver which is used for providing the data between the 806 microprocessor and memory and T1 state in this case happens. Now in the T2 state which is starting from falling edge of the second T state the bus which carries the address and data becomes tri-stated because nothing data can be accepted at the T2 state because data which is being coming from the 806 microprocessor is not available onto the data. So that's why this is tri-stated. Now in the T2 state itself the S6 and S6 to S3 signal, status signal will be available onto the bus which signifies the status of 806 microprocessor. So firstly the which segment is being connected to that and after that the interrupt enable. After that in the T2 state the signal become inactive because we don't need the MRDC or DT oblique R bar. So these signals will be inactive in the case of T2 state and DN bar goes high at the start of T2 state itself. So at the end of T2 state the S0 to S2 bar becomes inactive and by using DEN bar the external transceiver is enabled. Now what happens because of this external transceiver is enabled the direction of transceiver is already decided in the T1 state itself. So we have to just enable that so that whatever the data provided by the memory should be accepted by the microprocessor. So when it goes high the data will be available in the next T state that is T3 state that is D0 to D15. Now for example if we enable this DEN bar and the data is not available onto the data bus of the 806 microprocessor from the memory. So in that case the one of the wait state is added after the T3 state that is TW that is wait state. So it takes some time for one more T state for accepting this data from the memory. So if it is accepted or if it is available from the memory it is accepted in the T3 state itself if it is not it will be add the wait state and it depends upon the ready signal which is being sampled in the T2 state of 806 microprocessor. So depending upon that these signals are activated. Now in the T3 state the main part operation performed is nothing but the data is accepted from the memory to the microprocessor that signifies and at the end of that T3 state disable the memory read signal which will not read the next data after that disable the DT oblique R bar which will uh, stop the direction of transceiver and after that disable the DEN bar which will disable the transceiver and in the final T4 state the all the signal which are being initiated for example the status signal of 4 bit address bus and after that 
the S2 to S0 status signals which are being used for providing the bus controller and the other signals which are being provided from the S2 to S0 by using 8288 bus controller are being deactivated. So this is what happens in the memory read cycle for 8086 microprocessor in maximum mode. In memory write cycle bus of 8086 microprocessor for maximum mode, we are going to see what happens in the machine cycle with the help of different operations which are being performed in T1, T2, T3 and T4 state. Now firstly in the T1 state, the at multiplex address and data bus carries address that is A0 to A15. Similarly, multiplex address and status bus carries A16 to A19 as a address. Now for latching this address which is available on the address data bus and status bus, address latch enable becomes active which enables the external latch 8282 for latching this address onto the latch. After that BHE and S7 bar goes high or low depending upon whether it is a even address bank or odd address bank and the S2 to S0 signals are active for enabling the different number of signals. Similarly, the other signals which are being shown over here is DT oblique R bar is always high for the from T1 state to the T4 state because of we are transmitting a data from 806 microprocessor to the memory. So DT oblique R bar is one which will transmit the data. Now in the second T state, whatever the address gets latched onto the 8282 because of that the multiplex address and data bus carries now the data that is D0 to D15. Again the higher 4 bits of address bus carries now status that is S6 to S3. So which is used for signifying the status of 806 microprocessor interfacing whether it is a accessing the data from core segment, data segment or extra segment or status segment. Now for the next signal which are being enabled in the T2 state is nothing but AMWC or AIOWC. AMWC stand for advanced memory write cycle. So what this signifies is whatever the address sent by the 806 microprocessor which is latched onto 8282 that should be provided to the memory. So since the data which is being provided by the microprocessor that should be written onto the memory, the advanced memory write signal is initiated before the actual memory write signal is initiated. So because of which the memory comes to know that the direction of data bus should be in input mode in the case of memory. So because of this the direction of data bus is decided and apart from that the memory oblique TC bar will be enabled at the end of T2 state. So which will be nothing but at the end of T2 state. So this is what happens about the advanced memory write cycle and memory write cycle. So memory is being written in by the memory write cycle and advanced memory write cycle will be enabling the data bus. Now next is nothing but the DEN bar which will be enabled in the T2 state itself. So whatever the data available on the data bus will be forwarded to the memory and DEN bar is used for enabling the external transceiver. Now in T3 state, T3 state is given to the memory for writing the data which is being given by the microprocessor. So this data that is D0 to D15 will be written on the memory in the T3 state. After that the higher 4 bits of address bus will carry the status that is S6 to S3 and the advanced memory write signal becomes deactive in the T3 state and after that the memory write actual memory write cycle becomes low becomes deactivated in the T3 state itself. After that DN bar becomes from 1 to 0 which will disable the transceiver so no data will be forwarded for to the memory. And in T4 state all the signals which are being activated for the write cycle of memory in maximum mode will be deactivated. So this is what happens in the memory write cycle. So firstly in the T1 state address gets latched onto the 8282 
in t2 state data will be available on the data bus and apart from that advanced memory write cycle and memory write cycle are being enabled and dn var is enabled in the t3 state the data which is being forwarded by the microprocessor that will be written on the memory and all the other signals are deactivated for example amwc and mwtc and all the other signals are being deactivated in the case of t4 so this is what happens in the memory write bus cycle for 806 in maximum mode now if we consider the example for io write cycle of 806 microprocessor in memory in maximum mode the only signal changes is i a i o w c which is advanced io write so instead of advanced memory write it will enable the advanced io write by using s2 and s0 which is nothing but the output of 8288 bus controller and rest of the all operation for writing the data to io devices will be same in the case of io write bus cycle of 806 microprocessor in maximum mode now similarly when we are writing the data to the io devices we have seen the timing diagram when we are reading the data from io devices the timing diagram is same as the case of memory read bus cycle for 806 microprocessor in maximum mode only the signal which is nothing but mrdc change to io rdc which will enable the io which will enable the input output devices so the same happens in the t1 state is address the second the all the signals are activated in t3 state the data will be read from the io devices and the in the t4 state all the signals which are being activated that gets deactivated so this is we have seen the memory read bus cycle of 806 microprocessor in maximum and minimum mode and io read cycle of 806 microprocessor in minimum and maximum mode thank you